I can't even fit this thing in frame. It's so big. Well, <clears throat> it's really not that big. As this is a 10-gallon galvanized steel uh, trash can with a uh, with a lid. You might know what this is for, and I'll quickly show you what I have on the inside. And if I flip this over, show you the inside of this lid, you might know what I'm using this for. It is lined with cardboard, which is a good insulator. And galvanized steel, obviously, is not a good insulator. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's on the inside. This is also lined with car uh, cardboard. I've got one of my ham radios. Let's see what else I've got. A few flashlights. And in fact, I'll, I'll do a review on this later on, but I've got some flexible solar panels. Some of these walkie-talkies. I'm not going to pull all this stuff out, but this gives you an idea of what I'm using this for. It's called a Faraday cage. Whether or not these things work um, in the situation where you might need them to work is sort of unknown because you can't really test for it. A Faraday cage is what people like us who are preppers might use as um, as a way to pr protect electronics from an EMP. An EMP uh, <clears throat> is something that uh, a lot of preppers who fear might happen if there is an aerial nuclear attack or if there is a, a massive solar, fail, a solar flare. What an EMP will do is it will fry pretty much any modern electronic device that has microprocessors in them. Um, obviously this thing, this ham radio, and this walkie-talkie will be rendered useless under a, uh, an, an EMP type situation. So what do you do to build your own Faraday cage? Well, like I showed you, this galvanized, um, this galvanized trash can is perfect for that kind of stuff. This 10 gallon one costs about 20 to 30 dollars depending on where you buy them. It holds 10 gallons of stuff and what I do is I line it with cardboard so I make sure that it's nicely insulated on the inside and for something like this I put it back in its original box so that it's further insulated and then when I'm done I close the lid on it and make sure that it, this part makes contact with the outside and the entire inside of the trash can is lined as well. So what I have is a is a complete shield with an insulating layer protecting my electronic devices that are on the inside. In an EMP attack, the the radio frequency that my um, destroy all the sensitive electronic device hopefully will be shielded by the by the uh, conductive materials on the outside and insulating it'll go around it and then this uh, this insulating layer will prevent any damage on the inside like I said I don't know if it's gonna work uh, one of the ways that people have test to see that if uh, that if it works is by dropping a uh, battery power uh, radio FM AM radio into it tune it to a station so you get loud and clear drop it in close it to see if that signal goes away so that that tells you that it's shielding the radio from from um, uh, RF uh, radio frequency. Um, does this simulate exactly what an EMP attack would be like? It's hard to know. The reality is, none of us have the equipment to to uh, do such a test. There's also uh, other ideas of what you can do if you didn't want to have um, if you didn't want to build your own Faraday cage. What people do is they use a microwave. If you have a, a spare microwave collecting dust in your garage, go ahead and throw some, throw some electronic devices that you might want to keep after an EMP attack, like walkie-talkies, 
communications devices. You know, maybe store, if it's a big enough, if it's a big enough uh, microwave, maybe throw some, uh, put an old laptop in there with its uh, battery power. Put some batteries in there, rechargeable batteries, and uh, battery chargers. Uh, just anything that you think that you're going to need if the power grid is to go down or if any, any of the uh, services that are controlled by computers are to go down. You want to have that kind of stuff around. Flashlights for sure. Right, because microwave is essentially a reverse Faraday cage. It traps um, microwaves on the inside and prevents leakage to the outside. So a reverse Far Faraday cage theoretically will protect whatever is on the inside from what's going on the outside as well. Assuming that it's well insulated. So something to think about if you, uh, if you think uh, EMP is a serious enough issue for you to protect your um, your family and your and yourself from then consider doing something like this build yourself a faraday cage thanks for watching